Hey, this is Lewis from SoFly, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a case study bar similar to the one on Mixpanel.com using oxygen. So what, what's going on here is there are four columns, uh, and then mousing over the column makes it uh, move up in an animated way using negative margin, and also fades in this text at the bottom. And the columns have to move up a variable amount, uh, because the text could be three lines, four lines, however many lines the user enters. So we're going to do this uh, using JavaScript and CSS and Oxygen. So let's uh, let's do it. So I have a new page uh, in Oxygen. So to do this, I'm just going to put everything in a div. I'm going to call this div uh, my case study container. I'll give that div some margin just so we can see what's going on. Then in the div, we're going to put a case study column, and there are going to be four of those. So another div, we'll call this case study column. And this is just going to be 25% width and float left, and there are going to be four of these. Uh, then in the column, we're going to have another div called the animator, and we're going to set the negative margin of the animator to make it animate. So we'll add another div in here, case study animator. Um, then inside that, we're going to have a div that contains the image and then a div that contains this text. So, call this case study image. Uh, we're going to make it 260 pixels tall. Uh, and then I'll put an image in here right now. I already uploaded. I should have four on my computer that will be suitable for, for this. And then we're going to make this contained or cover the uh, entire div. Oh, okay, cool. Now we're going to add another div in here. We're going to call this the case study text. And we'll go for a kind of a dark UI style here. So we'll use like a uh, gray with like a little blue tint background. Um, then we're going to put padding on this, and now we're going to put uh, our logo. And title. And some text description. Okay, then I'll just style this real quick. Okay, this is almost looking usable. Cool. Okay. Uh, we got logo, case study title, case study description, got the image, uh, etc. Now, the way we're going to animate this is first, uh, this case study container needs to be less tall than uh, what's inside of it. So we'll try 350 pixels. And now this is sticking out the bottom, which is fine. Um, now what we're going to do is, the way we're going to animate it is we're going to put negative margin on the animator. So we're going to go transition, uh, 0.3 seconds, uh, ease out all, uh, and then to animate it we do margin top equals maybe negative 20 pixels, uh, but that's not right. Maybe we need to set overflow to hidden and then try animating the animator. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, 
Now the negative margin is moving this thing up. We want to use just enough negative margin to move it up the right distance, but we can't use too much. And the problem is we also can't compute uh, exactly what the correct amount of negative, we have to compute the exact amount of negative margin because this could be any number of lines. So, so okay, let's do that with JavaScript. So I'll duplicate uh, this thing, the column across the board. You know, before I do that, I'm going to set this to the ID selector just to make it faster. You'll see why in a sec. Okay, now see it auto selects the ID, so I can quickly set the backgrounds of each of these. Okay, and now time for the fun part. The JavaScript is going to make this all work. So we're going to go up to the case study container, go to the CSS and JavaScript tab, and now we're just going to use jQuery to do all this. So jQuery document uh, ready function. And now we're put our jQuery inside here. So the first thing we need to do is check when the mouse enters um, the case study uh, animator. When the mouse enters the case study animator, that's where we're going to apply the negative margin. So jQuery um, case study animator mouse enter is going to be, uh, it's going to set the, we're going to have to compute the amount of negative margin and apply it. So we're going to apply the negative margin to really that case study animator. So jQuery this um, CSS margin top is going to be negative 100 pixels. Okay, let's just see if that works for now. So we'll test on the front end. So when the mouse enters the case study animator, it's going to set the margin top of the case study animator to negative 100 pixels. So apply, save, and let's check on the front end. Does not do anything. So let's time to debug. Alert. Hello. Is it going to tell us hello when we enter the case study animator? Oh, you know what we forgot? Oh, we forgot to close this right there. Okay, so that animates just fine. Uh, now what we need to do is calculate the correct amount. So what we're going to do, this is 350 pixels tall, but you could really enter in any height for this. Um, so instead of hard coding the height, what we're going to do is we're going to get the height. So we're going to go, we're going to use this element ID to get this ID right here, case study container. So we're going to go jQuery um, element ID height. Uh, so we're going to compare this height to the height of the case study animator. Do I use this or do I do I put cones at the end of it? I do. Or sorry, parentheses. Yes. Okay, so um, margin top is going to be 350 pixels minus uh, whatever this is. And then we'll go alert, margin top, test on the front end, see if we get a result that makes sense. All right, negative 67 is how much we need there. Um, let's add a shorter text here, and then add longer text there. Um, now we'll go back to the container, we'll go to the JavaScript, and we're going to set this margin top to margin top to string plus px, because we want to end in pixels. Um, okay, apply, and we'll check on the front end. And look at this, it moves it just the right amount. Uh, now we have to do the reverse on mouse leave. So we'll just go mouse leave, we'll set the margin top to 
zero. And I did something wrong. Uh, I forgot the uh, closing parenthesis and semicolon again. Okay, there we go. That's how you animate it. Um, one finishing touch uh, on mix panel, the text kind of fades in when you mouse over. So we're going to do the same thing uh, here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this case study description opacity to zero. Um, then what we're going to do is when the case study animator is hovered, we're going to set the case study description to have an opacity of one. So to do that, we'll add a style sheet. We'll just call this case study um, animations. And we'll go case study description, sorry, case study animator, case study animator, hover, case study description. So this is gonna set the opacity to one when the case study animator is hovered for the description, like that. So we want this to animate nicely so we're going to add in a transition property, transition 0.3 seconds, all ease in. And now it should fade in nicely. All right, let's check this out on the front end. How it's going on here. Opacity zero, apply, save. Refresh, there we go. Now the text fades in nicely and out. And it's that easy. Um, all right, that's how to use uh, JavaScript and CSS to create a really cool animated case studies bar using Oxygen. And if you want to try this yourself, uh, you can fire up one of these demo servers by just going to oxygenapp.com slash try. And you can enter in um, your email, click this box, click try oxygen, you'll get a demo site, username and password uh, set up for you. All right, thanks for watching.